What we need is not more medication, but more education, because the best prescription is knowledge. This is Exposé, coming to you live from Lagos, Nigeria, every Monday on Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook simultaneously. I'm the regular host, Tony Akiyam. Don't, don't forget, what we need what is we not need more medication, more medication but, more but more education, because the best prescription is knowledge. Hello and welcome to Exposé with Tony Akiyemi this beautiful Monday evening, 8 p.m. West African time every Monday on Facebook and YouTube simultaneously. We are going to have the concluding segment on allergies today. I thought we could finish last week, but we couldn't. I started by looking at the conventional treatment protocols for allergies, and then we moved on to the natural treatment uh, protocols for allergies. I started looking at a few of them. We couldn't conclude, so I'll be concluding today, God willing. Uh, before then, let me wear my blue light blocking glasses, as I always suggest to people, because here in the studio where I am, all kinds of bright light are just, you know, staring me in the face. So this one helps to filter out blue light from hitting my eyeballs. Now, in the natural treatments that we mentioned last week, we covered seven of them. Number one, we said identify your triggers and avoid them in the meantime. Two, repair your leaky gut if you have leaky gut. Number three, improve your digestion. Number four, never get dehydrated. Number five, detoxify your body. And I suggested uh, purified activated liquid zeolite as a detox agent. Then number six, bolster your immunity. Number seven, that was where we started from that we couldn't conclude. Number seven, use supplements wisely. And we looked at a number of supplements. We looked at parsley root. We looked at DHEA. We looked at uh, flavonoids. Then we recommended a 50-50 mixture of organic oregano oil and olive oil for skin uh, inflammations from bites, insect bites and stings. We also spoke about lycoris root and we concluded with apple cider vinegar. So today I will carry on from there, supplements in the treatment of allergies. The first one I'll be talking about today is quercetin. Quercetin has display, displayed, you know, natural antihistamine properties thereby reducing allergic reactions and general allergies. So quercetin is available in the form of uh, capsule supplements that you can obtain. It's an OTC, you don't normally require uh, a prescription for it. And the next item we talk about today is bentonite clay. Now bentonite clay can help to alleviate rashes, eczema, food allergies, food poisoning, colitis, viral infections, and parasites. Now, you will see that this list of supplements that I'm giving, some of them address the root cause of the problem, some of them are also uh, treating or addressing symptoms. Now, bentonite, bentonite clay, for example, can help with uh, food poisoning, uh, it can help with colitis, it can help with uh, parasites, and it can also help to alleviate rashes, which is a symptom, or eczema, which is a symptom. But when it comes to food poisoning, when it comes to colitis, viral infections, and parasites, those are root causes of some allergic reactions. So you can see that it's dealing with symptoms on the one hand, it's also addressing root causes on the other hand. And the third supplement I'll talk about today is vitamin C, the ubiquitous <laughs> vitamin C. Vitamin C is everywhere, and it's almost involved in almost every therapy. Uh, vitamin C plays an important role as an antihistamine as well, and it reduces inflammatory conditions usually associated with uh, colds, fevers, 
allergies, and even the flu. So when asthma is induced by exercise, for example, massive doses of vitamin C taken before, during, and after the exercise will usually prevent otherwise expected attacks. So if you are prone to developing allergic reactions or asthma-like symptoms after you exercise vigorously, and you want to mitigate that, you can take you know, vitamin C before you go on that exercise, on that workout. While you are working out, you can also have you know, drinks that are high in vitamin C, for example. And then after the exercise, you also take vitamin C as well. Vitamin C is a very good vitamin when it comes to allergies. And then number four for today is potassium gluconate. Now, potassium works with sodium to maintain the water balance of the body and to aid the functioning of nerves and muscles. Now, other functions include, you know, sending oxygen to the brain and helping with clear thinking and so on. It also helps to lower blood pressure and may be used for allergies. You know, potassium gluconate is a form that, that is very bioavailable and the body can utilize very well. And number five for today is rosemary. Rosemary. If you have noticed yourself sneezing or your joints beginning to stiffen, you may want to consider adding rosemary to your meals. It contains what is known as rosmarinic acid. <laughs> rosmarinic acid. Rosmarinic acid. An antioxidant that works with your immune system to block allergy triggers. It also helps to prevent arthritis, by the way. Rosemary can also help to eliminate bloating if you are feeling bloated. Rosemary, very important uh, when it comes to allergies. The next one is reishi. It's a mushroom. Reishi has demonstrated anti-allergic uh, action via inhibition of histamine release from the mast cells. If the body is invaded by an antigen that elicits an immunological reaction, leading to various abnormalities and immunopathological symptoms. Red reishi may be effective in suppressing negative reactions and help the body to recover more rapidly. Reishi mushroom, very wonderful. Uh, and then we have bromelain, which is a proteolytic enzyme extracted from pineapple. It can be used for reducing swelling, that is uh, swelling caused by inflammation, especially uh, of the nose and the sinuses and what have you. Pineapple or bromelain from pineapple, that's another wonderful supplement that can be used to address allergies. And then probiotics, I think I mentioned that when I was addressing leaky gut. Yeah, probiotics are very wonderful, particularly when there is dysbiosis, an imbalance in your microflora, when the friendly bacteria versus the disease-causing bacteria in your system are in a ratio that is not balanced. Ideally, at least 80% of the bacteria in your system, in your body, should be friendly bacteria. Not more than 20% should be pathogenic bacteria. So when there is less than 80% friendly bacteria and more than 20% bad bacteria, that is an imbalance and that is a state of dysbiosis. So when you take probiotics, you know, you can take it half an hour before your meals, uh, one or more times a day. They, they, they help a lot, you know. They are microscopic bacteria. They normally inhabit the intestines, and they help to improve digestive health. They prevent leaky gut, and they prevent, you know, all kinds of terrible bacterial infections. And the next supplement is vitamin E. Vitamin E is an antioxidant as well. And you can take 400 international units daily uh, during the allergic reaction. And then after that, you can tone down to like 200 IUs, international units, every day. Another supplement is a mineral, that is uh, zinc, but in the chelated form, chelated zinc. During an allergic reaction, you can take as much as 50 milligrams once a day. But the recommended daily allowance is 11 milligrams for men per day and 8 milligrams for women per day. During an allergic reaction, up to 50 milligrams can be taken for a short period of time so you don't cause zinc poisoning, okay? And then zinc is not well absorbed into the cells except you take it along with an ionophore. 
And ionophore is something that serves as a transporter to allow zinc to penetrate the cell membranes and go inside so the body well absorbs it. And you can use um, uh, warm wood, which contains artemisinin as an ionophore. Uh, you can use um, quercetin as an ionophore, okay, for zinc. And then we have another herb known as donkwai. Donkwai. Donkwai is used also as an antihistamine and an anti-inflammatory agent. Donkwai uh, can be very helpful in calming down uh, histamine production. It causes the mast cells to, you know, stop producing histamine. Then there is nettles or eyebright, eyebright you know, which reduces congestion and secretions. It's good for itchy eyes, you know, sneezing, excess mucus, and it is also used as an antihistamine as well as an anti-inflammatory agent. And then we have ginkgo, ginkgo biloba. Ginkgo contains bioflavonoids as well, and it's used as an antioxidant as well as an anti-inflammatory agent. Then we have milk thistle, which helps to reduce allergic inflammatory and histaminic reactions, and it supports liver function primarily. Now, you might be wondering, am I going to take all of these things? No, 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 no. You, you will notice that I have given the effect that these respective herbs and supplements have on the body. So you, you just need one in the category of anti-inflammatory agents. You need one in the category of those that inhibit histamine production. You need one in the category of those, you know, you, you look at all the different effects and you pick one, 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 one in that category. You don't have to go get all of them and start using all of them, okay? And then we have red clover. Red clover helps to build the body's resilience and resistance to allergies, red clover. Then yarrow is another herb that reduces congestion and secretions, particularly, you know, in the respiratory system. And then we have canosin, which suppresses excess immune responses in those who have hyperimmune systems. As if your immune system is hyperactive, you want to calm it down, and canosin helps in doing that. Whereas it stimulates the immune response in those with weakened immune systems, you know, such as the aged, but this is a critical benefit for people with allergies and people with autoimmune disorders. When the immune system is hyperactive, it calms it down. When it is hypoactive, it upregulates it. Canosin, very, very wonderful available as part of certain supplements or as a standalone. And then we have raw, unfiltered, wild honey. Take note of my words, not just honey, wild honey. Not the honey that is produced with, you know, honey bees that are fed with sugar solution. No, the honey bees that are in the wild, that are foraging in uh, the forest, you know, flower pollens and the nectars and, there are, you know, a wide array of uh, plant nectar to make their honey. And so when the honey is harvested, it is not pasteurized. It must be raw, it must be unfiltered, and it must be wild honey. Raw, unfiltered, wild honey. It builds immunity, particularly to hay fever and all the flower pollen that can cause allergy. Because almost every... Uh, Flower pulling, every variety of flower out there and, uh, and, and nectar out there, the bee, the honey bee had gone around to pick all of them to produce the honey. So it's like you have very, very little, little, little portion of all the, you know, flower allergens already in the honey. So when you take it, it kind of like, it's like, it serves as, as, as a, an inoculation, so to speak, a kind of vaccine. It stimulates your immune system to develop you know, to understand that this is something in the environment and to develop, you know, an understanding of the fact that these are things that exist in the environment. So when you now come in contact into, uh, with it more in the environment, it does not have a violent reaction to it. Now, according to Dr. Joseph McCullough, in an article published on October 20, 2014, it says, honey reduces allergy symptoms. And this is what he wrote precisely, I quote, locally produced honey, which will contain pollen spores picked up by the bees from local plants where you live, you know, 
introduces a small amount of allergen into your system. Theoretically, this can activate your immune system and over time can build up your natural immunity against it. So it's like the bee that is harvested from your locality, your environment where you live, your own ecosystem where you live. The bees will pick the honey produced by the bees. Will, the bees will go around and pick pollen of all the plants in your environment. So by you take that bee that is locally produced, I mean that honey rather, <laughs> I keep saying bee, that honey that is locally produced by honey bees, you have already been inoculated with little, little, little amounts of the, the uh, you know, samples of all the pollens in your neighborhood, in your community, in your ecosystem. So that when you now get exposed to, you know, copious amounts and large amounts of this pollen, your body is already accustomed, so it doesn't react violently. And then those who have allergies can also consider doing a gallbladder and liver flush, you know. Uh, if your liver is functioning well and your gallbladder is clean, that can lead to, you know, higher energy levels, activation of, uh, you know, all the processes for your body to eliminate, you know, things that need to be eliminated. It can lead to higher energy levels. It can lead to alleviation of allergies, of flatulence, of digestive problems, of back pains, and more. How do you do gallbladder and liver flush? When we come back from this break, I'll be discussing that. And then I'll give you more of the supplements that can be used in addressing allergies. Don't go away. Meet Emily. She is passionate about living a healthy life, but finds it difficult to assess information on health and wellness. Cancer is survivable. That is until she discovered the online healthy living training offered by Reverend Tony Akiemi on lms.rafainstitute.org. The online healthy living training program is a comprehensive interactive course that covers topics such as nutrition, fitness, stress management, and mental health. The course is designed to provide participants with practical tips and strategies to improve their health and well-being. Emily is now equipped with the knowledge and skills she needs to live a healthy life. Join Emily and countless others in living a healthy life by signing up for the online healthy living training program today. Welcome back. This is Expose with Tony Akiyemi. What we need is not more medication, but more education. The best prescription is knowledge. We are dealing with allergies, and we are on point number seven on the natural treatments that can be deployed to address allergies. And the seventh one is supplements, and I'm talking about several supplements. I'm currently on number 24, 24th supplement. And like I said, in the first half, you don't have to obtain all the listed supplements. Uh, some of them are antihistaminic. In other words, they inhibit the release of histamine from mast cells. Some of them are anti-inflammatory, okay? Some of them are, you know, they, they help to address rashes. Some address you know, other symptoms that allergy can provoke. So what you do is, you look at all the supplements in the category of anti-inflammatory supplements and you pick only one. You look at all of those in another category and you pick only one. That's how to go about it. So before we went on that short break, I was talking about gallbladder and liver flush. How do you go about it? If you want to do a gallbladder cleanse, a liver cleanse, you can go about it two ways. One way is to buy the kit. There is a kit out there for those who are in Nigeria. It's available at Havila. It's liver gallbladder. A cleanse kit, liver gallbladder cleanse kit. It's just um, salt, a salt of magnesium with the ozonated extra virgin olive oil and um, you know um, it contains two capsules of a herbal uh, sedative that will help you to sleep you know at night. It's, it's a kit so when you get the kit the instructions are there in the pack to help you go through it. That, that's the kit that I also recommend to those 
who want to get rid of gallstones from their bladder. Many people have gallstones in their bladder and they go for surgery to take out their gallbladder. <laughs> that for me is using a sledgehammer to kill a cockroach. A sledgehammer or a machine gun, AK-47, to kill a cockroach. Why would you take somebody's gallbladder out simply because of gallstones? There is a two-day remedy, two-day kit that you take for two days and you will poo-poo out all your gallstones. You will see them, you know, in your poo-poo, the gallstones. Everything will come out We're in two days, you know. If everything doesn't empty, you can do a second cycle after about one or two weeks. You can do a third cycle and all the gallstones, gallbladder stones in your gallbladder, they will all be eliminated. And it's painless, very painless. The only small thing is that you have diarrhea during the two-day period watery stool, and that's when you are flushing out. You know, you take this uh, magnesium salt with the direction that is given there, diluted in, I mean, dissolved in water, and you drink it, you know, in four equal parts. You take them at different times, four times, two times on the first day and two times on the second day, all the time of the day that you need to take them, they are all indicated. And then it provokes a kind of diarrhea. You don't eat anything that has oil or fat in it the first day when you want to take it, from morning till about two o'clock, and then from four o'clock, you start taking the salt solution, okay? And it helps to dilate your bile duct. And then when you drink the ozonated olive oil with a glass of um, grapefruit juice mixed together, you know, it helps to stimulate your liver to start squeezing your gallbladder and the content will be flushing out because the bile duct will have been dilated and all your gallstones will be out. You won't even feel any pain whatsoever and everything is out. You don't need to take out your gallbladder, not at all, not at all. That's one of those things that I expect conventional medicine to review. We should stop cutting out people's gallbladder if all that is there is just gallstones. If it is gallbladder cancer, it's a different ball game. But if it is just gallstones, gallbladder stones, it is not necessary at all. Surgery is not warranted at all. With simple home remedy, you can get that done. So when I've mentioned the gallbladder and liver flush, uh, the kit is available, you can get that. The second way to do it is uh, you can also concoct your own, you know, substances at home to do your gallbladder liver flush. You get a glass of freshly squeezed orange juice. You buy orange in the market. You squeeze the orange juice at home, fresh. One full glass, okay? Then you get lime, one lime. You cut the lime into two, and you squeeze the juice of one lime into that orange juice, okay? Then you get four cloves of garlic, four cloves of garlic. You peel them, and then you drop them into the orange juice. And then you get like half a ginger, and you put it right in there and like four tablespoonfuls of olive oil and you add it and everything you blend everything together in your blender and you drink that's the homemade <laughs> variety okay but i prefer the uh, liver gallbladder cleanse kit because that works really well really well it's almost like a miracle overnight i mean within 48 hours you see your gallstones coming out and your gallbladder being flushed and emptied so you have an empty gallbladder and then your liver begins to produce new bile that will continue to fill into your gallbladder. Another one, supplements for addressing allergy, uh, sea vegetables like chlorella and spirulina. Chlorella will be our number 25 now, okay? It reduces uh, occurrence of asthma-like symptoms and asthma attacks and allergies. And you know why? Because it is deep green, and the green there is because of high magnesium content. Chlorella is deep green and it's rich in magnesium. And magnesium as a mineral is a natural bronchodilator. It dilates the bronchial tubes, so it reduces the occurrence of asthma attacks and allergies. But if you're allergic to iodine, you may want to avoid chlorella because it contains a high amount of iodine. But if you are not allergic to iodine, it's a good way to go if you're having, uh, you know, respiratory difficulty, as if you have asthma and you're you are not able to breathe well or you are wheezing, then chlorella helps. Similarly with spirulina. Spirulina is also a sea vegetable that's also very green and rich in chlorophyll, rich in magnesium. Now, studies have shown that spirulina actually improves allergies and respiratory function and enhances exercise performance. But mind you, spirulina, just like chlorella, also contains iodine. Similarly with kelp, although kelp contains less iodine 
than spirulina, spirulina and chlorella. And then brown seaweed is also high in iodine, and that is another one that you also need to watch out for if you're allergic to iodine. Uh, so chlorella is 25 and spirulina is 26. Now 27 is for seasonal allergies, okay, beginning natural treatments one to two months before the season starts actually helps to reduce the severity of symptoms when the season starts. For example, if you know that you always, you always have this allergic reaction to pollen when it comes to the season, when pollen is out there. One to two months before you enter into that pollen season, that's when you begin to take some of these anti-inflammatory, antihistaminic, you know, uh, supplements to get your body ready to be able to do that. So uh, that is number seven tip in natural treatments for allergy, uh, the use of supplements. And we have looked at several, several, several supplements. I think uh, I touched on about 26 or so of them. And then the 27th one was to encourage you to use these supplements one to two months before the season of allergies come. Now, we want to now go on to number eight because there are about 10 different things I wanted to recommend. Number eight is appropriate nutrition. Good health can help to ease allergy symptoms. And good health, in my view, starts with good nutrition. From the time a baby is born, breastfeeding is the starting point. It offers a lot of benefits to the baby to protect the baby and shield the baby from becoming a victim of allergies when the baby begins to interact with the environment. You know, breastfeeding can lower the risk of respiratory uh, tract and middle ear infections. It can help to lower the risk of eczema. It can help to lower the risk of obesity. It can have you know, added protection against heart disease, diabetes, asthma, and allergies in particular. It can also offer improved brain function and immune system function. So appropriate nutrition right from birth, probably even when the mother is pregnant with a baby, the, the, the diet of the mother, you know, impacts on the baby. So to give your baby a good head start in life as a pregnant woman, in fact, six months before you get pregnant is when you should begin to get ready, your body ready for the new arrival, for the new guest that is coming into your family. And then the nine months that the baby will spend in the womb is enjoying good nutrition. And the moment the baby is born for the next first six months of his or her life, breastfeeding exclusively if that is possible. And thereafter, you also watch the kind of diet that the baby takes. And don't introduce cow's milk to a baby so early so you don't begin to make that person be at higher risk for developing allergic reactions in particular. Number nine is desensitization. It requires, you know, a, a protocol to be administered by professionals, by experts. They, they do give things like oral immunotherapy, you know, to build up uh, tolerance by eating small amounts, you know, of usually baked foods. Then they do sublingual immunotherapy, small drops under the tongue, you know, to start sensitizing or desensitizing the individual from the particular allergen, food allergen. Then we have epicutaneous immunotherapy, injection under the skin to sensitize or desensitize the person. Then there is monoclonal anti-IgE antibodies, which helps in the reduction of the body's capacity to produce allergic reactions. And the use of probiotics, you know, also helps. That is desensitization. Uh, I always, in this regard, also recommend elimination protocol to desensitize, I mean, to discover, to detect the particular food or item that is creating your allergies. So the elimination protocol means that you look at all the 10 uh, food, hyperallergenic foods that I have listed earlier. You look at all the 10 of them. You list them and then you eliminate all 10 from your diet. Then after a while, maybe three months later, you now take one of them and introduce, you reintroduce one of them and take it for a few days to one week and see how your body responds. If your body responds, you know, and reacts to it, you know, an allergic reaction, then you stop it. But if you see that you are able to tolerate it, you know, without any reaction, that means you probably have been desensitized against that particular one. So that one goes off your list. And then you introduce a second one. 
And if you react to that, you drop it. If you don't react, you continue. And then you, produce a third, you introduce a third one. Don't introduce two or three or four at the same time. You eliminate all ten, and then you start reintroducing one after the other. Okay. Now, the final one, prayer. That's spiritual. Where you call upon God to touch you with his healing touch. I am a pastor as well. And so I believe in prayers. I believe in miracles. And I've seen people healed of all manner of conditions and diseases through prayer. So when all is said and done, and you have played your part, you've done everything you need to do, you've cleaned house, you've eliminated what you need to eliminate, you've taken what you need to take, you've made all the adjustments you need to make, then commit it to God. <laughs> Allergies are not part of God's original design for human beings. Allergies came along because of human activities. They are man-made problems. But they are real. And they can be troublesome and debilitating. But then, the good news is that allergies can be resolved. Glory be to God. Yes, they can be resolved. And when you deploy all that I have said, and you also pray, you can get a resolution to the glory of God. I have seen it in a number of people. My own son, you know, had allergies, but to the glory of God today, he's doing pretty well, pretty well. He's been able to overcome many of the challenges he faced, you know, as was growing up. And then there is another side to it. Uh, those who have, uh, who experience a lot of allergic reactions when they were children, by the time they grow up and they enter into their late teens, into their 20s, usually they outgrow some of the problems. But some people still carry it on into adulthood. And most children will outgrow this, their reactions to food and to environmental issues. As they get older, their immunity becomes more robust and they become more resilient and more resistant. All right, so we draw the curtain at this point today. Thank you once more for spending your beautiful Monday evening with me on Expose with Tony Akiyemi. It's always my joy to be your host. If you are yet to subscribe to our YouTube channel, please go ahead and press the subscribe button right away. If you are yet to like us on Facebook, go ahead and do so right away. And also click the thumbs up button. Don't give me emoji thumbs up in the chat room. Just click on the button, the thumbs up button that's at the bottom. Click on that one. That's the one I want. And then click the share button and share this video with your friends, your enemies, your colleagues, your neighbors, your family members. All of them will love you for it and thank you for it. And I want to pray for those who may be dealing with allergies that the power of God will be released towards you. You will overcome. You will become well. You'll be healed to the glory of God. And your testimony will bring Christ's glory and joy to your heart. Thank you, Jesus. It's done for your glory. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Bye. Have a beautiful week. God bless. Meet Emily. She is passionate about living a healthy life, but finds it difficult to assess information on health and wellness. Cancer is so that is until she discovered the online healthy living training offered by Reverend Tony Akiyemi on LMS.Rafa Institute. Org. The online healthy living training program is a comprehensive interactive course that covers topics such as nutrition, fitness, stress management, and mental health. The course is designed to provide participants with practical tips and strategies to improve their health and well-being. Emily is now equipped with the knowledge and skills she needs to live a healthy life. Join Emily and countless others in living a healthy life by signing up for the online healthy living training program today.